Does a more comfortable bike make your riding faster? We're talking about compliance, and if this is something you should seriously consider when it comes to your ride. Let's take a look. We've all heard those marketing phrases, like 10% more compliant than last year's bike. This is the most compliant bike we have ever made. More compliance means faster riding. But what does that actually mean? Are any of those statements true and do they apply to you? This is exactly what this video is here to help you with. But what actually is compliance? Well, it's the opposite of stiffness. It's a technical term that relates to the amount of flex or movement within a material or component. Typically with our bikes, it relates to how flexible areas of your frame are able to help absorb bumps from the surface you're riding on. A more compliant bike will typically be a more comfortable one. The level of compliance a bike frame offers is achieved in a number of different ways. You've got the angles and geometry of the fork and the seat tube, the materials used on the frame, and the shapes used on the tubes. One of the main advantages of using carbon fiber is that it allows manufacturers to precisely add stiffness or compliance in certain key areas by changing material thickness. The orientation and placement of the individual fibers of carbon and through creating unique shapes that are difficult or simply impossible to make with other materials, such as aluminium or steel. But we will talk more about material properties in a few minutes, because I guess the frame, well, that's just one piece of the compliance puzzle. Alloy, carbon, steel. Now there are gonna be differences between the different frame materials used when it comes to the compliance. Of course, compliance isn't the only reason for choosing a certain frame material. You've also got to weigh up the price, the weight, and the durability before choosing your preferred frame material. Young's modulus predicts how much a material bends or extends under tension or shortens under compression. This is important for flex when looking at material properties. Of the three most commonly used frame materials, carbon, steel, and alloy, they'll be all different in this regard, and that in turn affects their ability to absorb rougher vibrations whilst riding. With carbon and steel feeling more comfortable compared to alloy, which is quite rigid in comparison. Materials will also have strength in different directions. Is this the same in all directions? Well, in the case of aluminium and steel, then yes, but in the case of carbon, no. This is what makes carbon such a perfect material for building bike frames with, because you can make it strong in some areas, but flexible in others. So you can have that stiffness, and at the same time, you can have the added compliance, which is gonna help you on rougher roads, keeping the comfort, while also making the bike feel that you can put the power down and get that speed when you need it. Tires are perhaps the easiest way to change the compliance and the feel of your bike whilst you're riding. Wider tires are gonna feel more comfortable than narrow option and perhaps give the biggest perceived difference in how the road feels whilst you're pedaling along. By experimenting with different tire choices and going for the widest tire possible, you're gonna add a whole heap of compliance to your bike. And if you are considering a new bike, it's perhaps worth thinking about the clearance that the frame will have, because if you are gonna be constantly riding on rough roads, having that option there to be able to opt for a really wide tire is going to make a big difference, especially if you're riding on my local roads in <clears throat> Ireland. If you're able to opt for tubeless, then you can run less pressure without running the risk of pinch flats. Now, pinch flats are gonna occur if you're running in with inner tubes, especially if you're running on rough terrain like this. Tire pressure is something that you need to get right when it comes to your comfort and also your speed too. So going as low as you can is going to make things a lot more comfortable. It's almost like adding a bit more suspension to your bike, but going too low is gonna slow you down. So you need to make sure you get things optimally right. Now this can be tricky to do because the terrain, the ride surface, it's gonna change and also the aim you have for the day. Are you aiming to go faster or are you just going out for a chill ride? You wanna be as comfortable as possible. To clear this up, I think a really easy online tool is just to head to Silka's online tire pressure calculator where you can input all that information. It's gonna give you a fairly accurate reading of what pressure you should put in your tires for the day. So stay comfortable and fast at the same time. 
Your seat post is also going to impact your compliance too. Now there are options available that give you some flex and some degree of suspension too. Think of your seat post like a lever. The shorter it is, the stiffer it will be, and the longer it is, the more flex you'll have, and the less road buzz will be translated from the frame up to the rider. It's not just the length of your seat post that's affecting compliance, it's the material it's made from too, the shape and the design. Round or D-shaped seat posts offer far more flex than a bladed aero design. Canyon even make their own VCLS seat posts, which is designed to offer lots of flex. Or you could take it even further and get a suspension seat post. Now this one I've got here gives you 35 millimeters active travel using elastomers and a spring inside it. Now it's in a parallelogram design and it really gives you a lot more comfort. A frame's geometry is another important aspect to consider. So something with a longer wheelbase, more relaxed, head tube and seat tube angle is gonna increase the compliance of the bike. Making sure your bike is set up right and your bike fit is spot on is perhaps one of the most important ways to make sure that you increase your comfort on the bike and also your speed at the same time because you're not gonna fatigue as quickly and your bike fit is also gonna be in the right way so you're able to put down the power when it matters. And that is gonna make you faster as a result. You can see this change as you look across the spectrum of drop bar bikes from aggressive aero race bikes to endurance oriented bikes, all the way to gravel bikes, which too are starting to split between race and adventure offering. All the way through the spectrum, geometry subtly changes to allow for more relaxed compliant geometry that handles progressively rougher terrain. So the question is, does compliance make you faster? And the answer is it depends. I guess yes, and also, no, if you're riding rough surfaces, you're gonna require a more compliant bike. But if you go too compliant, you'll end up with a sloppy and slow bike. And no one wants that. Too little compliance will mean you and the bike will be bouncing up and down over the bumps, meaning less energy is going to move the bike forwards, which in turn will slow you down. Not only that, all the bumps over time will cause your body to fatigue sooner and means you have less energy available to put the power out and move the bike forwards. Whilst frame design and material does have a big impact on your bike's overall compliance, I really think it's tyres which have the biggest impact. That is why it is so crucial to experiment with different tyres and make sure you get your pressure just right before you go rush into your bike shop, picking yourself up a whole new bike. So there you have it, plenty of ways where you can make your bike even more comfortable. Yeah, I'm a big fan of comfort when it comes to riding. I do think that it can make you faster as a result. So paying attention to a few of those things, trying to improve it, it's gonna improve your ride as a result. Yeah, and make sure you like this video if it's helped you and given you some ideas to change up your bike setup. And we hope to see you in the next video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget that subscribe button too. See you next time.